Good morning. It's about 11 o'clock and I'm almost through my morning chores. I do most of my work here in the morning and I thought I'd just take you through some of the stuff that I do every morning. Now it varies. Um, there's the basic stuff that I do every day and then there's stuff on top of that that I do some days um, and sometimes just some weeks. So I come through here into the kitchen and I make my coffee. Um, I'm very fussy about my coffee. It's one of the things that I am very fussy about. So I grind my coffee beans and I make my pot of coffee and then I step outside with Jack. Then I come back in and I shower and I get dressed and as you can see through there now is my little dressing room. So that's a real luxury to have something like that. But for about 15 years it's just served visitors and the study and my grandsons who lived here for a year. Um, so it's lovely just to have this night to myself. So I'm indulging myself here in the luxury. So then I empty all the ashes from the stove, I give it a good rake, um, I set the fire in the stove, which I've done. I then go through into the, what is now the studio, it was the lodge, and I clean up in there and tidy up and then I light the stove in there. Because this is where I do most of my writing and I do all my posting and stuff from. But you can just see a wee bit of a flicker going on in there. Let me just see. Yeah, you can just see the flicker going on. It's just set very low at the moment. Um, I'm waiting for my books to be delivered because I've got, well, I've got to go and pick them up actually. Um, those are all the calendars and the books are all going to be, well, some of them will be put up there. So I'm hoping to pick them up either today or tomorrow. I'm just waiting for a phone call from the, my printers in my local town of Carrick on Shannon. Then um, I sit down at the laptop and I make sure that I have you know, any orders that's come through for books or calendars. I make sure that I respond to those. Um, and then I write out addresses and stuff. That takes me about takes me about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, because I handwrite and double check all the addresses on all the envelopes, which is why I've only ever had, I think, in three three years, I've had I think three returns, three or four returns, very very little. Um, if books ever do go missing, uh, they're not returned to me. That's for sure even though my address is on the back. But anyway, then I um, sweep up and you can see there's the broom I've been sweeping. Look at himself listening. And um, then I'm involved in kind of little bits and bobs around the place. Um, I have a shower. I empty my compost toilet, which has been done now today. So all that's emptied and I've got some new um, shreddings. Now at the moment the shreddings are lovely because I'm using the shreddings from the evergreen trees. I've got this beautiful smell of pine and pine wood and that's gorgeous. And that helps to build up the acidity in the soil as well when eventually after two years of biodegrading down in the big bins it goes back onto the land. Um, then, oh gosh, let me see now what else do I do? <laughs> there's, there's so many little periphery things because the way that I work is that as I'm doing a particular task, as I'm carrying out a particular task, I allow myself to take up other tasks as I see them. Um... Now, this morning I've been sorting out bags for the charity shop as well. So in here, there are two bags, the blue bag and the boots bag for the charity shop with clothes in. And I have my hat on this morning because it's been a bit cold and my jumper. 
Then I make my bed and sort out my bedroom and tidy up in there. Um, I make sure that Jack has his water bowl and his food bowl filled. Yeah. Now this is great because there's no coffee in this morning. Just a little bit earlier on. Um, what I've been giving him, which is the coconut oil, a teaspoon of coconut oil and two teaspoons of honey mixed in with some hot water to, to, to melt it all into a nice liquid that he drinks, which then in turn soothes his throat as well. Um, that's been working fabulously well. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, now, I'll just take you outside. Right. Still got sweet peas here, aren't they fab? <laughs> That's amazing. Because of course this is under a wee bit of um, perspex. Um, I've got to give my goddess another coat of uh, the garden wood stain preservative, which is water based by the way. Um, there's Jack drinking out of the, the rainwater. See, I think that's very good for him. When he drinks out of rainwater um, containers, and then there's another one here with rainwater in. You know, animals are much more instinctive than we are. We've actually given away a lot of our instincts and our intuitions. Animals still have them. Now, very high pedigree dogs seem to have lost them because they're bred out of them but um, a dog like a border collie here which is as close to um, the the kind of baseline that he came from as was is very instinct instinctive and very intuitive so um yeah then there's emptying the ashes which i've done um, emptying the compost toilet washing all that out which i've done um, oh look, he's just crazy to get out for any kind of a wee walk, isn't it? Um, just walk around this way. We'll walk down to the pond. Look at the amazing way that the clematis now is growing down over the front of the porch. <laughs> I am being wrapped in this beautiful quilt of greenery and of course it's, it's all insulation. All that is insulation. Now you can see the mountains quite clear today. The air is quite thin, it's very cold. Even though there's a wee bit of cloud cover, the field maple now has lost almost all of its leaves. And you can see there's this beautiful yellow carpet on the ground. And the Forsythia here is beginning to turn colour and those leaves will be dropping. And this is more Forsythia here. Look at this Catoniaster. Now this is a little one that I grew from, I think it was from a seed, and it was growing in a pot. And you know this is the gravel driveway, so there's basically no earth here. So I just popped the pot on top of the gravel in that wee nook, and I sort of spread some compost, you know, well biodegraded, two-year-old compost, around it, and a little bit of compost as well. And... Um, Look at this. Isn't that fabulous? So don't ever be deterred from planting if you don't have earth. If you only have a bit of gravel or you have stony ground or whatever. You know, as long as the plant is, giving, is given some food, 
you know, around it, which will wash down into the roots, those roots can become very strong and will just make their own way down through that gravel and even down through stone. And I've seen this time and time again. And I'm really noticing all the western red cedars that I've grown from seed that I just popped in along the driveway here. You know, over the years, I mean, that one up there, the big one, um, that's about 15 years old now. No, um, maybe 14 years old. This one here is only maybe four years old. Grown from seed. Jack sees a truck. <laughs> Look at him peeping. Look. <laughs> he knows I'm talking about him. And of course he doesn't go onto the road at all. He knows to stay within the driveway. Jack? Yeah, but he just he does love cars. Oh maybe he was a car racer in a former life. Come on then. Look at him. He's much, much better today. He's got just a wee, wee bit of a hut hut because he's running and he's excited. So here we go. Working well. Look at that. So this is um, about a week. We're about a week into this engineering project. Uh, you can see all the leaves look have congregated there. That's okay. And my decoy duck. <laughs> Some of you have said, is that a duck on your pond? <laughs> Getting all excited. <laughs> no, it's a decoy duck. Um, but ducks do come down onto the pond, especially over the winter. But as soon as they hear my footsteps, or they hear Jack, or anything else, they fly away. Well, they fly off, you know, then they come back, usually overnight. So I have what I would call B&B &B duck guests here over the winter. So you can see the level of the pond now is much higher than what's in there. There's still a little bit coming through, but I haven't actually you know, spent a huge amount of time building up that earth wall. But that's a project which is ongoing. But yeah, it's working. And um, I've been clearing uh, the pond weed, just working from the bank. So I shall be moving up through that pond in weeks to come. I don't worry really about the cold water because um, I've got nice woolly socks. I can keep warm. So there we go. So usually then I have my morning work finished for about 11. Now this is 11 o'clock now, but that's only if I crack on with things and I don't get um, sidetracked because, you know, it's very easy to be sidetracked living here at Bealtaine because one expects the unexpected. So there could be um, issues that I have to deal with outside. Um, if I go out into the barn to get wood, I can be sidetracked very easily out there. Now, one of the things that I'm getting sidetracked with even now as I speak is the fact that I need to come down and I need to cut some more of the evergreen. And I'll go deep, deep into, the, into the woodland here to do that and put it through the shredder then for the compost toilet because I always need to keep you know, a full um, container full of shreddings. And that way then, everything's kept nice and working. I don't think I'm going through that way now, Jack, to be honest. 
So I've got to go into town then today, um, just for a short while, and pick up, I think, the first batch of books, which is a cottage, um, the Bealtaine Cottage Guide to the Deep Midwinter, um, which will be the second edition, by the way, the second, no, the second printing, because I haven't, I haven't revised the book yet. Um, see, here's another one of my little... Western red cedars, so I can take. No, I don't think I'd bother taking any of the lower branches off that. Though I might clip the lower branches a wee bit. It's a lovely green beach. And then that's another little green beach in there. Look. And then this, which looks as though it's fallen over, but it hasn't, is a birch. And that's growing upright over there. There's so many trees now that are making their way through uh, the canopy. Because there was quite a thick canopy of, of um, willow. Now, one of the things I've got to mention here... I took some photographs yesterday when I was walking Jack and one of them was a lovely picture of willow growing out of the hedgerows um, on the on the roadsides here. Anything that's grown out of the hedgerows, unless it's outside someone's house, you know, you can justifiably, um, you know, take cuttings off. So all the willow that grows here at Bealtaine Cottage has originated from cuttings that I've taken Locally. Um, now, I don't know what it's like in other countries, but here in the west of Ireland, nobody mines, right? Um, but a lot of the willow, which is growing, now has to be coppiced to allow the hardwood trees through. But someone... Um, I posted a photograph of willow growing by the roadside. I posted that over on on the Facebook page and on Twitter. So if you want to see that photograph, that's there. And someone asked me, and I can't remember on what so social media platform it was, what kind of willow I grew here. I can't honestly tell you because Again, with, with virtually all of the trees and shrubs growing here, they've either been grown from seeds that I've collected, from tiny little things growing between cracks in the pavement that I've collected, or from cuttings that I've collected. So I can't tell you for definite what the name of that plant is. Now, I can give you a general name, so I can say willow, but there are over, I think there are well over 360 varieties of willow and growing because it cross-pollinates all the time. So I can't be specific except when I look at a willow growing like I can say, well that's willow um, Salix purpurea which is the black willow or that's um, goat willow because I can begin to identify it from the way it grows and sometimes from the leaves. So forgive me if I can't answer any questions about what variety this is or that is. Um, I can say this is a birch, but I know that there are several different types of birch. Well, I know that there's a lovely Himalayan birch, which is, a, I think, a white-barked one. Um, and of course... I can be specific on things like the um, dogwoods because you've got the, the red dogwood and the, the yellow dogwood. The yellow one is called Flavi Romera and the red one is Cornus alba sibirica. But then there is another variation on the sibirica which is a very bright red. So, so on and so forth. Um, so I try not to be too specific about giving answers. In fact, forgive me if I don't answer any queries at all. <laughs> the best way to 
get an answer to a query that you have is to put the pertinent words, so if it's willow, enter the word willow into your search engine, followed by Bealtaine Cottage. And because I spend time tagging, putting tags up on all my blogs and all my videos and everything else, the search engine should be able to come up with a whole selection of answers to your questions. Um, if I was to answer questions, I think I would be spending all day on social media and uh, that's not that's not something that I either want to do or um, can do. I just can't do it. So, I've got some beautiful leaf fall. The leaf fall here at Bealtaine grows deeper and deeper each year. And this is, this is how soil is built. Okay. Soil is built through rocks eroding. But most of all, most of all, soil is created from trees. And remember what I said the other day? Mother Earth has not designed and created things by accident. There's no accidents here. We pull down the trees. We create desert. We plant trees, we create fertility. That's simple. That's why I show you all these trees, that's why I've planted all these trees. These little three acres have transformed into a paradise, a garden of Eden. And this is why I put that on the front cover of my first book, A Cottage and Three Acres. I returned to Ireland in search of Eden. I couldn't find Eden. But I knew it only had to be uncovered. And I uncovered it through planting. And then that's where the bumper sticker comes from. Plant like your life depends upon it, for it does. And those who say we don't plant for ourselves, we plant for our children and our grandchildren, I can tell you, you plant for yourself and you leave the very best legacy that is possible for your children and your grandchildren. And if you don't have children, Be reminded that the next generation is there, up and coming. And it is our duty, it is our duty to nurture them as best we can and protect them as best we can. You know the old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. So this is now the end of the first week of Samhain and those who have the calendar will know that Samhain isn't just a festival. So on this beautiful morning, blessings to you all.